What if the global operating system, Windows, the platform that defines how business and government operates worldwide, is being systematically targeted for full-scale replacement? And not by some scrappy startup or a new version of Linux? Right. But by a coordinated, state-backed national strategy. That's exactly what we're seeing. That's the high-stakes reality we are diving into today. The articles and research we reviewed describe Huawei's aggressive launch of Harmony OS Next. And this move is uh, far more than a software update. It's being framed as China's formal, large-scale declaration of digital independence. So our mission in this deep dive is to really extract the key nuggets from the material describing this new system to understand how it achieves a total technical break from Google and Microsoft. And why it poses such an existential threat to American software dominance. We are really talking about splitting the digital world in two. It's crucial to grasp the context here, right? This isn't happening in a vacuum. Not at all. We are watching the moment. A major global economy is proactively engineering a complete divorce from the software ecosystem that has defined computing for, what, nearly four decades. An intentional, expensive, and non-reversible process. Absolutely. For many years, though, Harmony OS was easy to dismiss. I mean, Western tech analysts, myself included sometimes, we treated it like a footnote. A side project. Or just another Android skin. And for a time, that skepticism was, you know, warranted. Its origins were entirely defensive. You have to remember the context of 2019, mm. when the U.S. sanctions cut Huawei off from Google mobile services and uh, severely restricted access to advanced chips. The company was put in an impossible corner. They were forced to build an emergency platform. Exactly. The early versions of Harmony OS had to rely heavily on Android's existing underlying architecture AOSP as a temporary foundation. It was an essential crutch just to keep their immense device network functional. It was an escape route, but the developers we looked at are crystal clear. That era is completely over. That's the pivot. The launch of Harmony OS Next marks that critical pivot. It is not built on Android, it does not contain a single line of Google services code, and it doesn't rely on any Windows integration hooks. This is the final break. What's fascinating here is that the geopolitical pressure acted as this sort of unintended accelerant. Right. The company was essentially given an ultimatum, either innovate radically or face corporate obliteration. So five years of intensive development turned that defensive escape route into what is, I think, accurately being called a full-blown digital rebellion. So we are talking about the first fully independent operating system ever developed at this sheer scale in China. And not just for one device. It's designed to run across everything, phones, PCs, massive industrial controllers, smart screens, and vehicles. So if the genesis was forced survival, the resulting architecture is strategic offense. The key finding from the sources is that Huawei isn't trying to copy Windows. No, not at all. The engineers appear to be building a completely different vision of how digital devices should interact. And they're attacking Microsoft where its foundation is weakest. It's legacy architecture. But how does this actually give them a fundamental edge over modern Windows? I mean, Windows has its own cloud services, device linking. Where is Microsoft fundamentally failing here that Harmony Next exploits? Well, Microsoft's problem is systemic. Windows was architected decades ago based on the principle that your PC was a silo sitting disconnected on a desk. A monolithic system. Exactly. Harmony OS Next, conversely, is built from the ground up for a unified, hyper-connected world. It relies on what they call distributed architecture. Where every device, your phone, your laptop, your car is linked. Dynamically linked, acting conceptually as one giant super device. Think about the pain points you deal with today. If you want to move a large file from your phone to your laptop, you're usually relying on Wi-Fi, the cloud, a cable. You have to launch separate apps, connect to separate services, and you deal with latency. Harmony aims to eliminate all those distinct setups. It just treats them as functionally one unit. The sources have these incredible examples of this fluidity, like you're on a video call on your PC and you decide you need a better angle. Instead of ending the call or downloading new software, you just tap an icon and instantly redirect your phone's camera to act as the PC's webcam. Or dragging a photo from your phone's screen right onto a Word document open on your laptop instantly, as if it were a local drive. And that seamless merging of devices is something a decades-old monolithic system just can't match. It can't. Because the architecture beneath Windows is so vast and interdependent, trying to force this level of immediate cross-device unity, it just causes immense stability and security challenges. Okay, that brings us to the core technical structure, the kernel. 
Harmony OS Next runs on a microkernel. This is a technical term, but the consequences are huge. They are. To explain the difference simply, think of the operating system kernel as the brain that manages the computer's basic functions. Memory, inputs, security. Right. A monolithic kernel, like Windows, is one massive piece of software where all those functions, drivers, security, input, output, are bundled together. If one driver fails, the entire system can crash. It's heavy. It's very heavy. A microkernel, in contrast, moves those functions outside the cool brain. It only keeps the bare minimum inside. This makes the system significantly lighter. And more secure. Inherently more secure and highly efficient. If a faulty printer driver crashes, the rest of the OS keeps running perfectly. It's better for security patches, easier to update, and translates to immediate performance gains. And the performance claims emerging from developers seem to back this up, right? We're hearing talk of huge leaps in efficiency. Yes. The preliminary tests show significant improvements, up to 30% faster system performance and, crucially, 20% lower power consumption. So apps written natively for it will run closer to the hardware. Which means smoother animations, instantaneous switching all while using less battery. That performance advantage is only sustainable, however, if Huawei can guarantee quality control. Which brings us to their developer strategy. It's pretty restrictive. A native Harmony apps-only standard. They're forcing developers to rebuild using Huawei's R compiler and NextG development kits. That, this is the massive technical barrier they've created. It's designed for self-preservation. It is. The R compiler and these new kits aren't just rebranded tools. They force developers to write code specifically for this distributed microkernel environment. You can't just port your Android app over. You have to fundamentally change how your application interacts with the OS. It's a colossal amount of work for a developer who already has to maintain iOS and Android versions. So why would they bother? Because Harmony OS will soon be their only pathway to accessing the enormous Chinese market. This lock-in strategy is precisely modeled on Apple's success with iOS. By restricting the ecosystem, they get full control over security, performance, and API access. They're building a software wall. It guarantees a superior user experience and critically ensures they aren't dependent on any foreign software standards. Wait. They aren't just competing with Windows anymore. They are, as one source put it, out evolving the entire architecture. And that technical evolution feeds directly into the massive political and economic threat the U.S. tech sector is now facing. For decades, Microsoft's greatest asset wasn't really innovation, it was dependency. Governments, hospitals, major national banks, manufacturers, they all depended on Windows. And that dependency generated billions in highly stable, predictable licensing fees year after year. It locked entire nations into the U.S. tech sphere. This is where the state coordination moves from, you know, interesting to existential for Microsoft. Absolutely. China's government is backing this transition with a... Uh, unusual intensity as part of its overarching IT independence campaign. This is not a slow shift based on consumer preference. It's a strategic, aggressive purge orchestrated at the national level. We're talking thousands of state institutions, ministries, the biggest national hospitals, massive financial institutions, research centers, all preparing to completely phase out Windows-based systems. It's hard to overstate the bureaucratic challenge there. <laughs> Ripping out every Windows machine from a national bank, for instance. It's a multi-year, multi-billion dollar undertaking, but the instruction is clear. And losing those enterprise-level contracts is catastrophic for Microsoft. Because they earn exponentially more from a single ministry contract than from millions of individual sales. Exactly. This move is a direct, targeted strike at Microsoft's most valuable revenue engine, enterprise and government licensing outside the U.S. And crucially, Huawei isn't just offering an operating system replacement. They are offering a full-stack strategy. What does that holistic approach actually entail? It's the entire digital infrastructure, top to bottom. They provide the OS, which is Harmony, the cloud platforms to run it, the CPUs the systems run on. The AI accelerators, the security infrastructure. Mm -hmm. All of it. It's an end-to-end -end solution. It creates a protective moat. If Huawei or China is sanctioned in the future, they have zero dependency on American hardware, software, or cloud services. They're building a digital world where structural influence from the West is zero. The logistical and financial consequences for Western tech giants who depend on that enterprise market are just immense. So if this is the reality inside China, what does this aggressive push mean globally? This split is going to impact everyone listening eventually. It creates two massive geopolitical shockwaves. 
The first is perhaps the most strategic, immunity to sanctions. Right. Washington learned it could restrict hardware chips, factories, manufacturing capacity, but software. Software developed entirely inside China is immune to export bans. Meaning that once this is deployed on hundreds of millions of devices, political pressure cannot pull it back. Precisely. This capability is deeply unsettling for Washington and, well, profoundly liberating for Beijing. They have shifted the battleground. The hardware war was costly, but the victory they seek is in creating an unsanctionable core technology. And the second shockwave is the distribution mechanism. Harmony OS doesn't need to win a direct consumer battle in the West to succeed globally. No, it spreads via hardware export. Think about all the devices China exports. Hundreds of millions of laptops, smart TVs, industrial controllers, appliances, and especially those next-gen electric and autonomous cars. Harmony OS goes with them. It's baked in, often as the native control system. It bypasses the need for Western market entry strategies entirely. It's a silent structural invasion through the supply chain. And we're seeing this model is highly appealing to developing nations outside the immediate sphere of U.S. influence. Absolutely. Countries already relying on Huawei for fundamental infrastructure, their 5G networks, data centers, countries like the UAE, Saudi Arabia, Brazil, South Africa. They're discussing deeper software integration. They see Harmony OS as a path to digital independence from U.S. influence, which carries connotations of surveillance and control. It's a low-cost, high-integration alternative to the aging, complicated Microsoft model. Tech CEOs globally understand the power dynamic here. OS dominance is strategic power. And the developers we looked at they laid out the chain very succinctly. Whoever controls the OS controls the apps. Whoever controls the apps controls the data. And whoever controls the data controls the future economy. For the first time in 40 years, the West faces a technologically sophisticated competitor capable of completely breaking that chain. The analysis suggests we are rapidly entering a split tech era where American software and Chinese software grow into two separate, self-sufficient universes. Making compatibility and integration increasingly difficult. So the final takeaway is that the old consumer battle, iOS versus Android, is now secondary. This is America's established software empire versus China's rapidly rising digital sovereignty. And the operating system war of today will decide global economic and strategic power, not just how fast your phone opens an app. And the momentum, according to prevailing analysis, suggests Harmony OS Next has already accumulated too much institutional and development support to be stopped now. Which raises an important question for you to mull over. The U.S. successfully managed to restrict China's access to advanced chips, the hardware. But if the ultimate strategic power rests in unsanctionable software that governs the entire ecosystem, the operating system, is controlling the hardware still the winning strategy. What is the limit of sanctions when the core OS is specifically built to run autonomously, completely cut off from the rest of the world?